So let's go over a little beginner's guide to evaluating trigonometric functions using the unit circle. I don't care if you're just learning about the unit circle or you kind of forgot about it and you need to do a quick little refresher, this video is going to have you covered. Now to evaluate trigonometric functions using the unit circle, there's two main things I want you to know. The first is going to be the first quadrant, but not just the first quadrant of the unit circle, but the points and the angles that are aligned to it. So the first angle, what we're gonna have here is a pi over six. That is going to have the coordinate points, square root of three over two, comma, one half. The next angle is going to be a pi over four. That is going to have the coordinate points, square root of two over two, comma, square root of two over two. And the last angle that we're gonna be working with here is going to be a pi over three. And that is going to have the coordinate points, one half, comma, square root of three over two. Now we create the unit circle by using special right triangles. And that's really, really important because the next thing I want you to know is our definitions for our trigonometric functions. Now I'm just gonna focus on the main ones, sine, cosine, and tangent, but you could also do this exact same video with reciprocal functions. The process is exactly going to be the same. But a lot of students remember sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And they're like, well, where did we get to y? Like, where does that come from? So just a reminder that on the unit circle, the hypotenuse is going to equal one. And we can always create a special or a right triangle from this coordinate point given this angle. So we have this angle here, it would be a pi over four, the hypotenuse is one, and then we have an x and a y coordinate, right? So if you look at this, you could say the y coordinate is square root of two over two, and the hypotenuse is one. If I was gonna do the sine of pi over four, then the opposite side would be square root of two over two over one. Well, what is square root of two over two over one? It's just gonna be whatever the y coordinate was. And we can go with that same understanding with cosine as well as tangent. But I'm not gonna deal with just angles that are in the first quadrant. I actually want to evaluate some trigonometric functions in all of the quadrants. So I'll go through that all through it step by step for you in this video, because I know by the end of it, you're gonna have a good understanding to be able to do it on your own. All right, but the first one, we gotta always start with something easy, right? We, we don't wanna go outside the first quadrant until we know how to evaluate with the first quadrant. So I have the first quadrant over here, so it's kind of cheating, but hopefully you'll get by. So this one says cosine of pi over four. What does that represent? So again, it's the cosine of pi over four. Now, what does the cosine of our angle represent? It represents x, which represents the point on the unit circle. So it's very important when we say x cosine of theta equals x, that's representing the point that lies on the unit circle. So we go over to our first quadrant. We look at pi over four. We go to the coordinate point that's on the unit circle and we have an x and a y coordinate. We see that square root of two over two is going to be our x coordinate, which again makes sense, right? It'd be adjacent over hypotenuse. Since the hypotenuse is one, we know that this is just going to be a square root of two over two. All right, the next one here is we have five pi over six. Now, to do problems like this that are not in the first uh, quadrant, we need to understand how to graph them. And when I'm first teaching students how to evaluate trigonometric functions, I always make sure we go over graphing angles. I want you to make sure you know how to graph an angle when it is in radians. So a couple things we need to take care. Here is the whole unit circle. Now, we talked about, or hopefully you understand that halfway around circle is going to be pi, and all the way around the circle would be two pi. Now, in this point, we know that this is going to be a pi over six, right? Now, pi can also be rewritten as a six pi over six. Wouldn't you agree that six pi over six is the same thing as pi? Yeah, because the sixes would divide out. So in this case, I have this as five pi over six, which basically means if you were to break this into six equal parts, I'm going to be pi over six short, which is going to be right here. So now I need to look at this and I say, all right, well, how do I know this point from the points that I was given. Well, what I want you to recognize here is this point, this five pi over six, or this angle five pi over six, is a direct reflection of the point for pi over six, right? So if I look at the, what it is in the first quadrant, square root of three over two comma one half, and I reflect that about the y axis, I'm gonna notice that now my x coordinate is going to be negative, but my y coordinate is still gonna be positive. This point is negative square root of three over two, comma one half. However, I'm looking for the y coordinate, right? So when I'm looking for the y coordinate, I need to determine, well, the y value, when I reflect that over, was still the same, right? The only thing that changed was my x coordinate now became negative. So now I can realize that this answer is going to be a positive one half. All right, the next one, tangent of three pi over two. So let's go back to our graph. We know that halfway around the circle is going to be pi. If I go half of that, we could say this is going to be an angle of pi halves. 
but we need three pi over two. Well, think about it. Pi halves, two pi halves, three pi halves. That's gonna be all the way over here. Now, one thing I left off over here on this first quadrant, which we should know, is this coordinate point is one comma zero. This coordinate point is going to be zero comma one. And again, remember, because the distance from your origin of all the points on the inner circle is one. So here, we know the distance is gonna be one, but now we know that it's going to be a zero comma negative one, because it's obviously going down. And again, remember, tangent represents the y coordinate over the x coordinate. So that's gonna be a negative one over zero, but hopefully you remember we cannot divide by zero. So ladies and gentlemen, this is a example of a undefined value. All right, now let's go and get into some negative angles. And I kind of jump started over graphing five pi over six without actually explaining how we graph angles in positive or negative directions. When we're graphing an angle on the unit circle, counterclockwise is always going to be our positive direction. If we want to go in the negative direction, that's going to be clockwise. So we remember five pi over six was like this, right? That's going to be your positive version. So if I want to do the negative version of that, I'm just going to go in the clockwise direction which is gonna be over here. Again, I'm still going to be pi over six short of going halfway around the circle. It's just now going to be in this, this third quadrant. But again, the important thing I want you to recognize here is how is this point related to this point, which is also related to that point, which was our pi over six. And what I want you to see is this is just a reflection about the origin. Basically what I'm doing is taking this point here, pi over six, reflecting about the y, y axis, and then reflecting about the x axis. When I reflected about the y, the x changed to a negative. When I reflected about the x, the y changed to a negative. This coordinate point has the same values as this one, but the x is negative, so it's negative square root of three over two, and the y is negative, which is a negative one half. Since we're only trying to evaluate for the cosine, we just care about the negative, which is going to be a negative square root of three divided by two. All right, now let's get into sine of five pi over three. So sine of five pi over three, well, we know that halfway around circle is pi, which is the same thing as a three pi over three. We know all the way around the circle is two pi, which is the same thing as a six pi over three. So again, we're at five pi over three, which is what? It's going to be pi over three short, correct? So we're missing, that missing part is going to be pi over three. So again, I need to understand what is going to be the relationship with which point? Recognize on this one, since I was pi over six short, that was what we call our reference angle. So we can use that how far we are away from our x-axis to refer to what coordinate point we need to refer to in the first quadrant. So here we have a reference angle of pi over three. That's how far this angle is from our x-axis. So the point that we need to refer to is this one, which is going to be pi over three. These are going to have the exact same part, the points. The only difference is in the first quadrant, my x and my y are both positive. In the fourth quadrant, my y is going to be negative. Since we're trying to evaluate the sine of a negative of this angle, we're gonna be looking for the y coordinate, so that's important. So we look at pi over three, that's gonna be a square root of three over two, but since we're actually looking for it in the fourth quadrant, we know that it's going to be a negative square root of three over two. All right, last but not least here, we have a tangent of a negative two pi. Now again, remember, tangent or negative is going in the clockwise direction. So we see two pi here. Well, we know negative pi would be over here. Negative two pi, it actually is just going to be a full revolution around the circle. So then we're back to this point over here, which is going to be one comma zero. So remember, tangent represents a y over x, which in this case is zero over one, which we know one over zero is undefined, but zero over one is just zero.